Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have one of your returning favorites, Spencer Pratt Daddy Pratt. <laughs> Crystal, I've got my crystal you gave me. I've been wearing it for four days, four or five days, whenever it arrived. And I really think that my bruises around my eyes got better, so I'm not wearing any sunglasses or my little gold patches. I just tried to cover them. It's still not totally there. Give me about four more days to be complete peak of cuteness. I was so excited when I saw you on the yacht wearing the crystal. I was like, this is, I didn't have to pay for this budget of this Pratt Daddy photo shoot. I screenshot that quick. Let's go on all the website. Uh, well, I have been covering, and I and someone found this, that... Listen, what I had did, I did an interview a while ago, or somebody pulled it up. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Heather McDonald admitted to being fascinated with fainting, saying, I guess it's the attention that faint victims have gotten throughout history of soap operas that attracted me to it, but I always felt if I fainted at least once, it would bring some richness to my experience. I could tell people at cocktail parties I was so embarrassed when I looked up and saw all the coworkers looking down at me, and I guess I had just forgotten to eat that day. So I said this like two years ago. I mean, my first thought before I saw the video was like I was jealous because <laughs> it's such an amazing – I mean, you couldn't have gotten more famous in one week without doing anything to get can You can't get canceled for fainting, you know? Uh, well, I, mean, I have pissed off s all different facets of people with it. Well, I mean... But, um, yeah, yeah. It, it was real uh, and it happened, but I do feel like kind of put it out in the universe for it to happen to me. But then I saw the video and I was like, ah, you know, would I have taken that, all that fame for that? No. <laughs> I don't know. No, if I, could that, go, if I thought it was like one of those chill fainting where you're yes. like, oh, that's what I'm I, going down. That's what no, I was I didn't imagining. Know. Like, it looked like you got unplugged. Remember like, when like Lisa <laughs> Vanderpump... <laughs> <laughs> like supposedly fainted yeah, doing Dance with the Stars, but the guy grabbed her because she just kind of probably wanted off the show. Maybe she fainted, maybe she didn't. She'll take it. Well, whatever. She says she was fainting. But yeah, I always imagine the fainting to be that someone just, you know, that it wasn't a cracked skull. But um, yes, I, I got a little fame from it. But um, no, I would I would definitely not. I do not need this. But <laughs> some people are not happy with me because I mentioned Jesus and I said, I haven't gotten COVID, blah, blah, blah. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. And then I went and fainted. So this guy has a uh, YouTube channel, and I watched some of it. <laughs> and I told him, I'm like, God strikes down, this is the name of his show, the topic or the episode, God strikes down female comedian after blasphemous joke. I mean, my first thought, because you name drop Jesus, I thought of the Holy Spirit. And when yeah. I watch those scenes in churches, when people get hit with the Holy Spirit, they always go down. Oh, you right. You know, but there's yeah. people there to catch them. You just didn't yeah. have, like, Justin should have been there ready. She's going to name drop Jesus. And you should have, he would have, you would have fallen into his arms. And then all the church crowd would have loved you. Like, <gasps> it would have said, comedian filled with the Holy Spirit goes down. I mean, the people that do belong to my church... I've heard from a couple of them, the Catholics, and they were just like, sorry to hear that happened to you. They're not saying that Jesus flicked me or the Holy Spirit or anything. But then other people that really take the Bible literally think that me talking about Jesus like that, he didn't like that. And you're on Drudge Report. Oh, I am? You were. That, oh, that's like, great. Yeah. And it <laughs> said, like, that's a big, it was like war with Russia, like invasion. And then it was like comedian collapses. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I have to say, I was like, is this Heather? If I was going to, I guess you're right. If I put it out in the universe two years ago, which I completely forgot that I had ever said that really out loud. I said I, I always kind of had a fainting fantasy, but not like this. And now I'm like, you're right. If I was, and if you're, if I was going to do it, I thank God it happened. I mean, you know? and you're, everything's, again, I'm, it I'm, looked like it hurt, but in the bigger picture, I was very I'm excited. still okay. Was... Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. But you see me because you're watching this. But have you subscribed? Have you told a friend? Have you liked it? Have you copied the link and texted it to someone you love or you just feel like being a nice person to? Please do that. It keeps us going. So if you like watching Juicy Scoop here on YouTube, subscribe, like, and share. Oh, my gosh. We're going to TikTok right we, as I bring okay. out my TikTok water. Oh. oh. Okay. So, Spencer, you've been on TikTok for a while, but... Something exciting is happening with your TikTok career. 
And that is you are going to watch old episodes of The Hills and comment on it. And you're always funny anyway, but um, people are loving the new TikTok creations. Yeah. So Heidi's really good at TikTok. She has tons of followers, almost a million. And, and I'm not good at dancing. Like, I can't People lip don't sing. realize it's so – I never even get one dancing video in my For You page because that's not what I'm interested in. There's so, so much other yeah, stuff. So I'm going yeah. after, you know, full vlog lifestyle. I'm going to bring my Snapchat energy that I had pre-Hills reboot Got back it. to TikTok because – TikTok, I feel like you can post stuff and it actually, people see it. Whereas yes. all these other places now you have to pay. Like I'll talk to, I'm not, you know, these executives at these social media. They're like, well, did you put a swipe up in your store? I'm like, why do you think I'm on your app to like sell crystals here? So I'm so excited to be on a platform that like I can post and it's like, boom, half a million, half a million. Like that's yeah. a lot of people. So, and then also the reason why I've, you know, been so fairly quiet about my experience with MTV and the Hills. I was always trying to get more paychecks from them. Yes. And since that's clearly over for ever and I can't like bring a zombie back to life again, <laughs> I am literally going to burn this whole show down. Like burn the bridge. Uh, it's, it is just, the bridge is already I, on fire. Scorched earth campaign. And is it not the greatest, most freeing feeling on earth? It a is. Little bit. And then also what people are so surprised You know, because I've already like in one of them, you know, I I wasn't even meaning to be positive about LC, but I was positive about LC because Heidi was saying, you're the best in a scene. You're the best thing that's ever happened to Jason. And I was saying, oh, that's one thing I can agree about because there's nothing good about this guy. But like people are like, oh, he's defending LC. It's like my take is going to be very neutral all the way through. It's not going to be like a a targeted. (laughs) One of the ones that I thought that was funny was it was... I think LC and maybe somebody – oh, and Whitney and a woman saying like, LC, you'll always be remembered – or Lauren, you'll always be remembered as a person that didn't go to Paris. And then you're like, look, they're already brewing for the Whitney spinoff. And then you're like, what about your life, lady? Your life is being actually on the hills. Like it was just funny the way you, you're bringing out – the behind the scenes stuff of making a reality show, which I'm always really, fa- which I'm fascinated about when I see these reality stars doing these ridiculous things, which I'll get into. I have it screen grabbed. I'm like, God, the, how did you let the producer talk you into this? How did you not think like this is going to be detrimental for the rest of your life? See, that's another thing that people are like, uh, oh my God, he like let go. This is so old. Like this is actually very healing for me because mm. I've never watched the, I just watched the reboot that just happened, but I right. never watched the original Hills. Yes. And to like watch how I was just used as a pawn when I thought I was in on the game, you know, and like, this, and you were what? Yeah, how many years ago this? Like 15 years, years ago? Yeah, 12 years so, ago? So, but I thought I knew what I was doing. Right. But these 40 year old plus producers were playing me out so hard. So to get to really, like, you know, some of my TikToks, I'm planning on going up to three minutes and explaining, like, what I thought was going to happen here versus how, you know, because I definitely sabotaged my life in a sense, you know, how I would have played it versus. Now, because I would have gone back and done a lot of the same stuff, but there's so many things that aren't my character. So it's like I'm fine with being a fake for TV person and like making scenes, but it has to be authentic to something. You know, I did stuff I would have never done just to like make a scene, which I shouldn't do. I should do stuff that I don't need to usually do, but I'll do to make a scene as as well. One of the best deep is that one of the ones I saw that really like stuck with me is you calling out the main producer, Adam, and your TikTok, because there's a scene where Heidi, when you guys were just boyfriend and girlfriend, had to tell you that she was late or thought she was pregnant. Explain what you tell so in that's, that TikTok. That, like, I watched that back, and I'm like, this. I think Heidi had literally probably just turned 21 years old. And they had her go. They brought them. They're like, hey, can you fake like you think you're pregnant and tell Spencer? And it's like brought pregnancy, pre- tests. Brought pregnancy tests. And it's like we're both like, oh, this is so funny. But like what now I look back as an adult thinking that just shows Heidi looking like she's, you know, obviously people make mistakes. I'm not right. shading people that like mess up with timing. Oh, don't cancel me women and pregnancy rights or whatever. No, but, what, but, I'm you, saying, but what you said like, is you put her in a vulnerable position where she went along with something that – 
wasn't her character not only yeah. to want to have a child out of wedlock, but also to n- possibly not be responsible about, about yeah, her own that's birth That's never control. happened to Heidi yeah. in her life. She right. never accidentally had, like, had a, yeah, yeah. thought she was so... Like, and even playing with something like that in retrospect now as a mother... Yeah, this is, isn't like, is this isn't cool. a skit. Yeah, you know, yeah. so, you know, it's all fun and games. We're getting checks, we have cameras, but now as like an adult adult, I look back, I'm like, these mofos just like totally and and you know, the and the now pot, like and you couldn't pot. even ask a woman to do something like that now. If a male producer, like I guarantee you, maybe a two years ago when people yeah. cared a little bit more, but uh that was for a second there that she could have like are you kidding me? You type of thing, you know. Well, also the possible pregnancy storylines. Sometimes it's producer driven. Sometimes it's cast member. I mean, I'll never forget when Ramona Singer was, I don't know, 53. And we were supposed to believe that she thought she might be knocked up and her daughter's 16. And I'm like, at 53, you think you, you're knocked up. Like, I mean, and then other cast members like Jill Zarin was like, please, she's in menopause. She's like calling her on it. But, yeah, it's always such, like, these typical things. But in your case, it is way more sinister. Yeah, so I just can't wait to go. You know, and there's so many scenes that, like, uh, one of the things I just talked about where it looks like I am having an emotional meltdown. And I realize, you know, I really was because I just walked out of having this producer, Sarah, pretend she was jerking off in my face because I was complaining about how everything is happening. And she's like, you get paid. And she's talking about how much I get paid. You get paid more than all of us. Didn't like, don't complain about like looking awful, which, you know, that was the continue. Yeah. Like, I'm over this shtick. Like, can I just be a normal person? And she like fake busts like a nut on my <laughs> face with her hand in front of everyone. And then, uh, and then I'm like, are you kidding? And, the, and leading up to that, she's like, well, you know what you want to do? You should do censor. And that was like this you famous should do thing. You should punch your sister in the face. You see how good that was for Snooki and Jersey Shore. So it's just this kind of, eh, 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 like, again. And this producer was already banned from supposedly being on set with me. But they got, they lifted the ban. And they were like, because she was just always, they called her the collector. Like, like the garbage collector. Like, you know, like, what a world that I'm going to just get to expose now. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Now that there's no more checks coming, like yeah, I, you bought me off and then you stopped paying. For, so now let's play, you know. But I keep tagging Paramount Plus because they got no. It's like I'll I'll binge watch all your shows on TikTok. You want to send me some checks over here, Paramount Plus? Because <laughs> I'm um, watching it on Paramount. Plus. Why was your wife Heidi eating uh, raw bull balls this weekend? She actually didn't get into the testicle. I guess that's the outer layer of the the bison balls i guess it was yeah. she was supposed to cut we found out later from the she was supposed to cut what is that the point part. of this so we were following for 30 days the carnivore doc uh it's, oh. it's the, his book is the carnivore code okay this guy dr paul salandino where he only eats like organs and meat and there's supposed to be all the nutrients in these like testicles and liver and it was an experience i couldn't do the gnarliest thing i did was the um what was it? Lamb kidneys. Oh my God. Just raw lamb kidneys. And, and she eats a bite, but didn't she cook it and eat the whole thing? No, you're supposed to eat it raw. Oh, and does she eat the I whole raw thing? Get, I, I don't think she Disgusting. can get in. Yeah, Disgusting. Disgusting. So, yeah, yeah. All right. There's a show called Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I don't care if you're That's watching Heidi's, it. It's one of Heidi's favorites. Okay, so you're a little it. familiar. I don't know if you saw it last night, I missed. but this girl, Whitney, who I, I was binge watching the worst show ever, thanks to you. Okay, well, we're going to talk about that too, but anyway. <laughs> This girl, Whitney, who I like, she's cute on the show. She and her second husband, but they have like 12-year-old kids or whatever, a couple kids. Her storyline, a very common storyline for Housewives is uh, our sexual groove is off, you know? So the final episode of the season is he comes home surprised. There's cameras everywhere. And she's wearing a real slutty one-piece, up-the-butthole, low-cut uh you know, Fashion Nova. Yeah, like Fashion Nova bathing suit. Okay, I've seen a lot of fake. Let's get it on with the you know, and it's just so weird to imagine these like, people aren't actors; they're parents. They this is second or third season of second season of a show, so you know she's not getting paid that much. They have businesses, and they are allowing the producers to come in in their bedroom and film. This like a full blown like basically like a porno like a sex scene. So he first she puts some champagne down her tits and he motorboats her. That's nothing. 
Oh my! Oh, she's like she takes off her top and just has. That's um, on Bravo now. Oh, no wonder why their rating is so good. This is like this is. <laughs> and then this, she growing did, up, I had to like stay up late to watch like right. Showtime or something. So like she that. puts her, just the those little nipple covers. Oh yeah, but so that, that she can film the scene completely topless with all the cameramen this is, there. This is and, why the hills was canceled. We didn't have this level of effort right here. And then, um, and then they roll oh, around and oh, paint, oh, and he gets oh, naked too. <laughs> <laughs> and then does what this. What do I? Heidi loves this show. No, just oh my gosh, this is. I don't know. Like I, this is what reality is. Listen, come to. I watched it, it, but I was like, God, you know, this is you. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I'll tell Whitney to her face. Like, okay, you did this. I think it wasn't smart. I don't think you had to go this far. Um, please don't do any more like this. Her husband's having though, you know. But it's just so you can't like fake that smile. But like, okay. No, I'm just. I mean, we're already in the trenches here. It's I like, mean, it's just. I I don't know. So how? Okay, I'm I'm Whitney. I know you're not an improv actor, but I've just thought of an improv that I want to do with you. I mean, I could have seen I'm, us I'm, doing Heidi and I doing this at, the, at this level. That's what it gets to. It's like, that's what it gets to. Yeah. Okay, so it's I'm like, I'm I'm like, why did they use paint? I I was thought it would be like oil. Okay, so I'm the housewife. And you're going to talk me into what we're going to film tonight. The crew's at the house. This is what you want me to uh, do. You're I the producer. Produce. Oh, I'm, your, is... I'm a housewife. You're uh, a producer. Uh, uh, and you're, you. you know uh, this, this show literally... needs a little something. Go. So, Heather, yeah? you know, I don't know if you've been watching on social media right now, but really viral videos on TikTok have been couples and they're being creative with paint and it's fun and it's sexy, but it, it still gives that like young hip edge to like you guys and we just think it would be really good to just showcase how the progress in your storyline in this journey you and well, but Peter Peter yeah. have, have been on this season um, and we just think without it just looking you know porno-ish but still having that sexy young hip vibe we're just going to put paint down and we're thinking you know we have these great pasties so it looks sexy like you're naked but it's just like you're wearing pasties it's like you're at the beach and then uh peter you know he's been working out and he's really feeling confident so he's going to be able to show his new muscles okay and and, you know, it's just going to be a quick scene and it just shows how you guys are young and hip without it just being like, you know, ugh. so and I mean, we already I'm, have it all set up. I'm and, proud of my body and I'm proud that we're still together and boning. But I don't know, like, do you think like my kid? they don't really watch the show, but what about my kids might see this? Do you think that would bother your kids them? would never watch this? Your kids are they're never going to hear about it. No, kids, they're, they're no playing video can. games. Are you these kids don't watch cable and this isn't gonna and this oh you're too old i'm sorry oh. they're, they're loving, they'll never see this and okay. you know what the show needs it right okay, now the yeah. rest of the cast is just not bringing it and you know we just want you to be the a storyline for this oh. episode and right now you're like c b and you could just jump right to the a and then you know about the chiron talk we had yeah if they're you know if we, we get that season four we're gonna push your chiron to the front of the housewives i'll be where, the middle snowflake no we're thinking the front just boom and then we'll have one of these great shots so that's also what you got to take into account is just do you want it more than these other these these because they are the network is looking at new cast people they're looking do we want somebody younger sexier hipper people me? i mean that's what the network said you know we love you as the producers but i mean i love the crew i always feed them and let them use my real bathrooms you know and we're thankful that but we have been using bringing in the sanitizer you know so that, i hope that's they have been cleaning after right With oh the, yeah i just i just know there's been other reality stars that would get like um outhouses and andy dumps and stuff and i just want it to get out there that i respect the crew and their cargo shorts and i let them take dumps in my powder room whenever they want. And I just want that on the record. Well, this scene will help with that, you know. <laughs> this scene, it's all its all the same thing, Heather. You, you just, we need to get this done. And we're losing light right oh, now. Oh, so okay. like the, the crew, they already lit this right. Oh, but okay. the way the moon is all right. right now. And then how long do I have to have Peter um, like slap my ass and act like we're horny for each other? Because... 
Um, I got a lot to do tomorrow, and I want to like take a shower after. And I don't even think I want to sleep with him tonight. Well, so. see, the thing is, yeah. we don't have a full crew tonight because of uh, COVID okay. and precautions. So we actually only have <laughs> two camera operators. And since one's going to be on sticks, the other guy, uh, they're going to have to be moving around. So we'll probably have to shoot it three times oh. as if we had that extra crew person. So okay. I'm thinking we could be hard out, no pun intended, in two hours. <laughs> okay. Wow, thanks so much yeah, for always yeah. caring about oh, me and my oh, storyline and oh. just like really having my back. It's, I hope you tell Andy how accommodating I am as a as a mother who also does uh, reality porn. You know, we, we always let the network know that you just are so vulnerable in front of the cameras. Oh, God, and, and thanks. It's, it's such a change Thank compared you. to some of these other housewives yeah. that just image craft mm. and they just, you know, they think they just show up and they get all the followers on Instagram. But you're about to, you know, get naked. Hopefully and, inspire couples to um, fake fuck in front of a crew. You know, it. it's... Uh, <laughs> It's trending. Did I tell you that? That's a, it's, it's a big thing. Wow, that is great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, let's talk about some other juicy stuff that's happening, Spencer. Britney Spears. Oh, by the way, yeah. your shoe thing has melted my brain. What she did finally thing? change her shoes. Oh, the, 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 the brown Britney, pumps. She only wears, I couldn't figure that out. I was like, what? Is, is this a sign? And then I started, went down the rabbit hole, and they were like, you know. Now, so. She just likes to dance in them. They're just her comfortable shoes. Britney Spears is set to do a tell-all book for $15 million. The only other person that's made more than this are the Obamas. Is this for sure? This is for sure. It's Simon & Schuster who did my book. Everyone. I think they might. uh, Hopefully, they'll make more. It's a lot of money to give up front, 15 mil. I mean, um, I would but, definitely listen to the audiobook if she does the voice. Well, I I'll do the, I could do the voice for her. Ah, if she um, won't, you could step in. But I also think what um, will be great, why they probably paid this much, is when you do the book, then they also probably got the rights for like any kind of TV movie, movie about her life. Oh, and they and just that's saw the where Pam I, and Tommy in their life. That's life, where yeah. the money's going to be. Because I just think these books, they sell, but also. My other advice to them is don't give advanced copies out because that's the thing. What happens, these books come out and everybody does a book report on it. Everybody talks about it and then no one wants to read it. You got to save the juice for the actual book so that all the super fans get it that Tuesday, read it that Tuesday and the first ones to know about it. That's my advice to Simon & Schuster. But um, as Britney Spears, um, I'm kind of imagining how this is going to be written and like what – you know, who's going to come to our house every day to make sure that we get this, you know, 300 pages written, you know. As, I hope they make a documentary about the yes. people r- working on this book with her. Right. That's the movie I want to see on Netflix. Her just like okay, well, I'm gonna trying be, to reflect. I'm going to be Brittany and you're coming for our three hour session. You're you, you're going to help me write it. You're going to force the stories out of me. Oh. OK. So I'm so glad you're here today. I'm ready to just spill it all and tell about my life, about I've always loved singing and dancing, and I've always really been nice to my sister, and I just want the world to know the truth. Well, Brittany, that is why I'm here, because we are going to follow the truth. And from what I've read off your Instagram captions, you are already an incredible writer. So we're just going to take your voice pretty much just your Instagram captions, and we're going to make it into a book. So for the next three months, just imagine you're going to be writing lots of Instagram posts, and and I'm going to put them into chapters. Speaking of my Instagram post, every 45 minutes, I have to take a break to dance. Dancing is where my heart and soul is, and I put my uh, iPhone up over there, and then I'm just going to leave the room, and I'm going to spin around in my brown pumps, and my yellow crop top, and that just gets me, like, focused, and I have to do that. I have to post it. First of all, where is your old-fashioned typewriter? It's in the car. They told me, your agent said, you love old-fashioned technology. So yes, I, I, would... do, I, I'm, I just feel like as a real writer, which I assume you are, and now I am too, but I'll just be telling you what to write. I don't want to see um, any kind of, like, laptop or anything. I want to see old-fashioned typewriters, so... Click, 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 click. That's all you're going to get. I think it's going to be 
great. I mean, it's good. They, she's... but it's going to be a lot to deal with for the company and a lot of like making sure she doesn't defame anybody. What she tells, what what don't we know? I don't know. I mean, did she save enough for this book? I think so. Okay. I mean, think about it, she's. It's been years and years. The the hopefully she remembers. Like if she was really next level, like it was like the Yay documentary instead of being filmed all these years. What if she's like brought the journals and was like boom when the writer and yeah. she had like the secret journals just stashed like under her bed under oh, like the yeah. wood and she like noted under every, the wood like the wood yeah like, yeah like she like. I know. hope so. I was talking to this That's guy the hard part. that was supposedly talking to her all the time on a WhatsApp WhatsApp app. And then I talked to him on the phone before when we didn't know, like, is she in charge of her Instagram or she's not? Like, a few months. And then I kind of just honestly, I just sort of, like, was like, I don't even know if this guy's really talking to her or not. I'm just kind of tired of it. You be- Why would you believe this guy? I-, I think maybe he was, but I'm like, well, where is he now? Like... Like if she was, if she was, if he was his her secret companion to talk to all this time, why isn't he like now getting lunch with her and taking a photo uh, together? I, like I, that's I that's what makes me kind of wonder, <laughs> and that's why I started to like sort of lose interest in like uh, following up and talking to him because I'm like I don't even know if I'm if you're yeah. really talking to the real person or not. I don't think I would have believed that person. Yeah, because I'm like, well, why, why wouldn't she be like, thank God you were my one respite during this time now that I'm free. Come out and do my makeup and like, let's hang so out. That, I am convinced, as I keep bringing this up to Heidi, that she feels that she had her makeup because there are people like this. I've yeah. witnessed that they've had their makeup done so many times in life as celebrity that they think they are as good as the artist because right. I thought right when she got free, she would get the A-list makeup Glammed artist, up again. Yeah. get a re- one of these it stylists that just takes whoever and they just all of a sudden they're in all the outfits and she could just, but no, she's just, it's, I guess she's in her flow. But I also wonder if because she couldn't have that many people around, maybe she doesn't really want that many people around. Maybe she does. Maybe she gets the people around and then doesn't feel that comfortable it's like you know when someone has been you know captive or star i always remember we're like this is like not comfortable but like someone that's been starving then they gave them the really great bowl of soup and they were like i need to put water in it this is just too rich and too because i'm so used to having this shit like i don't know like maybe she can't i love to know i was kind of was like no well i the story better come out soon she is the book uh, better come i feel out like soon. her dance moves like or she inspired Heidi to get a pole. Heidi's like that last video. Heidi was like, "Oh, I she need had to get a stripper a pole. pole." Well, she was dancing on that like ballet pole. Oh, okay. And Heidi was like, "I need to get one." That was another reality show thing that everybody had to do: go to stripper class. Remember that? Well, it was for fitness. Everybody yeah. went to strip class, strip yeah. tease, and then everybody went to just uh, twirling around in sheets hanging from the ceiling. Remember that, that thing? It's, a lot of people worked out like that too. Now it's just everybody getting the M sculpt. Uh, so Heidi did that your... like two years ago and the I unsculpt? tried it. It hurt so badly. I was like, how are these people doing this on their butt? <laughs> like I did on my ab and I was like, it didn't, so you didn't, it didn't work. It? No. It, and also I even with the like hookup, it was s- stupid money. And I was like, Is it still too much? I think maybe it's trendier now, but I don't think, I mean, they're like, it's like doing 20,000 squats. I'm like, I don't believe that or whatever. Yeah. Like, no. I don't know. Well, that's yeah. They do that on the reality shows. Okay. No, my new favorite thing on yeah. Instagram, people. You know, I follow all the the influencers. That, yeah. Like you know, in the Erwan culture, and they <laughs> all just get the like. These girls are already so skinny, and their new thing they do is uh, the lymphatic massage. So they're pretty much naked on IG, and they're like, it gets all the. Like gets what out of your body? Like it's just a way what to like. What is a lymphatic massage? That I don't. I'm not. Gonna I mean, miss, wait, I don't. I think they it's massage. Just a regular massage, your, right? But it's the new thing that all of these people I follow oh. are always like. Just like with the music, I'm like, what am I? What is in my store? Like Heidi will be like, what do you want? I'm like, no, no, she's usually an air one. <laughs> but yeah, why is she was, naked? Yeah, I'm like, rubber yeah, now. Right. <laughs> Pam and Tommy is on Hulu. It is every week. I've been watching it. And, you know, what's interesting about, like, this couple that had to do this sexual scene on Salt Lake City is, you know, the the video that they took of themselves, 
they really never wanted it to get out, unlike some of the people that followed them. They it it was like in the the little small tape that would be in a handheld video camera. They just put that in their um, safe, which then was stolen by a disgruntled. Um, contractor who claims he wasn't paid by Tommy like he was. Then he oh, goes. Oh, yeah, and he was paid in the real story. No, he, he says he wasn't paid. Oh, oh, okay. He says that he was difficult, and then he didn't like the the work, and then he was like, "Get the fuck out!" And then he came back to pick up his tools, and Tommy was like, "No, I'm not even giving you your tools." And that's when he was like so pissed, and he went and robbed and robbed the house and took this. Um, safe that he knew there were guns in there, I think, because he saw it once, but he had no idea there was going to be a tape in there. Then he sees the tape and is like, oh my God. And he already was in the porn world. Like his wife was a porn, ex wife was a porn star. So he goes around the valley trying to sell it. And the head of Vivid and everybody else are like, this is incredible, but do you have signed releases from Tommy and Pam? And he's like, no. So it's the early days of the website world. So they just create a website. They start selling it for $60, which is a lot back then in 96. Then people got it and they started making bootleg. And I remember seeing it. Uh, so I, I remember I going to the watch improv this. and people being like, come back. Oh, like we're slanging it in the back. You no, know, they were like, I was at oh. the improv and they're like, have you seen the Tommy and Pamela tape? No. Well, so-and-so has it at his house. So I went and I watched it and I remember watching it and feeling really and I wasn't a big porn watcher, but like I totally remember him steering the boat with his dick, her swimming in the water, then being – and I'm like, this is like a married couple. I'm like, this is just kind of sad. And like, why are we seeing this? I remember thinking like it was so bad. Heidi watched – like it was all fun, the show. We were loving the show. We were drinking wine. And she yeah. was loving it. And the then Hulu once, show. Yeah, yeah, the Hulu. And then once it got to like Pam like being upset, like Heidi started crying and, and like got all – upset and i was like this is supposed to be fun like you're ruining our binge like i like stormed away went to bed like was so emotional i was like this just turned into the worst Saturday night ever well it was kind of interesting because she like felt this like so bad for pam like she was so and i was like it's not the end of the world she's like it is like but you kind of see what they're showing is that you know she started out as a playmate and then she got legit TV work. She was actually not only on Baywatch, but I forgot she was on Home Improvement as like this hot tool girl. And so she was like a good, you know, actress that could hit her lines and stuff. And she wanted to become a legit actress. And just as that's kind of happening and Baywatch is about to end and she's got her movie coming out, Barb Wire, this hits. And so – and he's like, hey, I'm naked in it too. And she's and he's being protective and loving of her, of her, but at the same time she's like, but it is worse for me. And I think what they're not showing, but I believe as a woman, I'm guessing if I was to get her at Juicy Scoop, that it was him that brought out the video camera to start, and that it was him that was like, let's sh- film our love. So even though he had no intention of it being stolen or getting at, getting out, what happens with couples is like, if it wasn't for you pushing for that. This wouldn't have happened. And so I think some of their fights and resentment could have happened that she never encouraged it to be filmed. Yeah. And in her defense, yeah. I love barbed wire. i you know, it's not her fault it wasn't hit. Like I was saying to Heidi, like, look how the production value they gave like Angela Jolie for salt. Like they yeah. made her Jason Bourne. The budget felt like the same budget that yeah. they would give Matt Damon. Like they didn't set her up to win with barbed wire. I'm going to oh. rewatch it just to like prove that point, but that's my Maybe. theory. Maybe. So yeah. I'm watching this and I'm like, the parts I do love is like how crazy in love they are and, you know, this sexual attraction and how they so badly want to have babies. So being that you are actually friends with or worked with Brandon Lee. So it's Brandon and Dylan. Dylan's the well, older one, Well, right? now from the show, it's not Brandon Lee. What's what's the real last name? That blew my mind. You didn't hear that? He's, no, what? You know, she's a, he's like, well, that's not my, that's my middle name. Oh. What was his real name in the show? And I was like, oh my gosh, so Brandon's Wait, last so, name is really like. Oh, because, because Tommy's real last name is not Lee. Correct. So he has Tommy's real last name. The I great, would imagine the unless, he, unless you sign a birth certificate, right? Lee, he could write up in his own oh. last name. Maybe, maybe Brandon. So, and does is Dylan legit. Lee go? Does Dylan go by Lee too? Dylan's yeah, they both. Yeah. And Dylan's the older one, right? Younger, I think. Oh, Brandon and Dylan. And what I mean, 
uh, what it what is it like for kids that have Pamela Anderson and Tommy like as parents, and then this? Like, do you think that the, that they're at all either boy is watching this out of curiosity? No, I don't want well, like too painful to. I watch. think because Pam does not like this, they're not watching. But then I read, or Heidi read to me that uh, Tommy thinks it's cool and like said something, but that could be misquoted. Oh but yeah, I thought I, she read that to me, but it did make me watch this and appreciate Brandon's personality more and have more understanding for like he turned out pretty good, you know, yeah. for that level like of, of chaos. Uh, yeah, and yeah, and this these type of parents, which. Obviously, they're good parents, or at least Pamela yeah. was, because he is a a nicer guy. You know, yeah. Not, I don't, I'm not vouching for him for in the mob here, but like he's, I feel like he could be. Way I wish he had been worse. We maybe have a season three. <laughs> well, I remember like once they got they broke up, and they broke up when the kids are little, and which we haven't even got to that part in the series yet. And I do remember then she had her own show on E. That she was like, you won't see my children. You'll only see their feet running around the Malibu house. And that's when the boys were like maybe eight and ten or something. And it was like one season. It was a bomb. I remember talking about it with Ted Harbour because I was on Chelsea lately. And like it was supposed to be this cool thing. But then she really, really didn't want to show her life or share her life or her dating life or anything. And um, and then I think there were times where she sort of struggled financially because she wasn't like still working and because she was trying to, to protect the children so much. So I think that, yeah, they were mostly, you know, raised by her. And I think that's why they, you know, and they went to good schools and all that. And so, I mean, I just wonder what it's, I just would like, like, yeah, that must be so crazy to know that your parents were like, you know, like how like now on TikTok too, people are like, you were raised by Karen, but I was raised by a, and and young kids are kind of like loving that their parents were like hot in the nineties. Oh, and so I, like I kind of think there's some like cred, like cred oh, I think to the he, fact, well, maybe, yeah, yeah he like look whole, at my parents. I'm like pretty she, sure most of his identity is that you know having like, yeah, like that's pretty insane. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, now, what why was, wasn't what was Dylan interesting tapped, to me yeah, was. Uh, that I never looked at, like, I always thought of Tommy Lee's always being this rock star. The way the show shows Kurt Cobain and, like, Seattle grunge rock coming, up coming out and just taking out rock and then having their album be a dead, like, that he almost dealt with the same emotional roller coaster I have dealt with when Jersey Shore came, <laughs> like, they were the Kurt Cobain of, of the, the totally. East, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh, I know that feeling. He's going through trying to work on a new album when... Yeah, that. like even though you want to, you, you sold a million whatever albums. 50 million, that's, yeah, that's they're they're still not yeah. the hottest thing right it's now. And even a, though Motley Crue's had a bunch of comebacks, uh, currently they're doing another like tour. But at that time, yeah, you're like, wait, is this it? Is this the end of it? You know, and like kind of freaking out. That's about the weirdest it. part. I continue this journey with like trying to maintain relevancy or fame. That like, you know, people will be like, oh he's trying to do this and it's like in my heart in my spirit it's like no but i've already achieved more than 99.9 percent of the planet could ever in the level of fame but then you're going to take that all that away from me like the way i look at fame is like i didn't go if his fame's bitcoin i didn't sell sell any of my fame i didn't just because you maybe stopped caring i've i have logged this level or i was just uh profiled for esquire shout out esquire and i had a great analogy i was like fame is like if it was a video game like all the coins i got as i'm going through the video game grabbing all those coins like i never traded them in like you're all these new people are trying to get new coins like i have a vault full of coins you may not see me for that anymore because you care about the new hot thing but in my spirit where i am in my reality so it's just this weird how people are always trying to break me down and like at town I'm like no you don't get where i've already accomplished right beyond what was set up for me in the fame game like yeah my oh like let me be you know this little character on this reality show like so it's just this like tommy you know he, so do either do is either boy um are they in music either boy yeah dylan is like uh yeah he's a i want to say producer rapper singer ish yeah and then i think brandon now like works with him I think they're in whatever they want to be. I think so they live Brandon, great lives. Brandon Thomas Lee 
Oh, that's cute. And Brother Dylan are selling their Malibu home featured in the hills for $3 million. So they live together in this house? Yeah, I never met him. He was never Dylan there was never part of that. I, yeah. And why didn't they want Dylan to be part of it? Maybe he didn't, didn't want, want him. him. Yeah, because I would have put them both in. Yeah, I mean, I would have put anyone on the show, but the people they did. I'm fascinated. You, you know, know, I... And then she just is getting divorced again. Pamela Anderson ended up marrying that her super bodyguard. Producer? No, oh, that wow. end the super producer that is over. That was uh. over with very quickly. Then she met some bodyguard that was also working. Maybe it wasn't a bodyguard. Maybe worked on her house anyway in Canada. And then he actually was married to somebody else or something. Anyway, he left that wife. They fell in love, got married. But apparently, that's over with now too. So she's a hard time finding the right guy. You know, I was, I've always been a Pamela Anderson supporter. So. Absolutely. Okay, so TikTok star, this is crazy story. This TikTok girl who is like, I think she does the dancing and stuff. She's like 15, 16. She makes a lot of money per video, like $1,700 per video is what I read. <laughs> she had some like guy stalking her. And he was saying like, send me photos in this. So the parents were like, all right, but just, you know, whatever. So she sent the photos. I I think like a foot photo. And I, I don't I know. Saw nothing this, like yeah. naked. Nothing yeah, no, naked. Foot and just but the guy then photo. became more obsessed with her and came to her house with a shotgun. I didn't realize he was only 18. He was only 18. And the dad had a gun. And I think he was an off-duty police officer. Anyway, blew the door open with the shotgun. But they were like there and a lot. It somehow stayed alive. But the dad went after him and killed him. Well, then, no, he came back. So that, Wait, what that happened? incident Tell me. like ended. Okay. And then the kid comes back again. <gasps> and that's when the dad kills him. So, But, I mean, if you come to Gunner's TikTok house, uh, you're probably not leaving either. <laughs> so good for his dad. Like, Gunner, your son. Yeah, yeah. So I was like. I mean, very scary because, you know, for these parents, like – that allow their kids to do it and they are making money and it's their creative way and they're they're trying to protect them oh, and they're on it, but they can't prevent some weird And that fact fan. that he was only 18, not like a creepy older one. I imagined you know, an older yeah. one when I first read the story and I'm like, it's really sad that also the 18-year-old was so screwed up in the head that A, he had access to a gun that he would do this and he would get so obsessed with someone like, that he follows on TikTok. Yeah. And then would die. Um, and it's also happened to like IG models, like a couple of IG models. Have recently oh yeah, that killed. that yeah. pretty yeah. I yeah. remember that story. Some came yeah. So. You know, it's you you're putting yourself out there in such a a public way, and you know anybody can find where you live. It's mind boggling. It's like well, so. It is scary for these parents. All right, let's talk about Kanye West. So Kanye I got was, an inside scoop on this. Give me uh, some scoop, so Kanye. Corey, so yes. Corey Gamble. Who is Chris's long-term, long-term boyfriend. So yeah. he's not just Ye's nemesis. He's one of my best friend's nemesis. Why? So growing up, one of my good friends who uh, for now maybe 12 plus years has been a celebrity bodyguard. You know, we went, grew up as kids, but he went into that business. Okay. And he was Kylie Jenner's bodyguard for years. Okay. Right when Corey Gamble... Uh, got into the picture. Okay, he took over as to like take the money. Took over. He fired all the bodyguards and then hired this new company that he was getting a commission out of each. You know whether it's five percent or ten percent. Like the inside scoop from my buddy Eric was like he's making at least you know million dollar lot of money. Just shows you his for, little for, by him connecting. The family with a whole nother bodyguard team. Age that just where yes. he was getting then, a cut. When right, this, a commission, when yeah. There was no, like Eric, there had never been an issue. He'd been there for many yeah, years. He yeah, he does all the top people to this day. There's and no, so what happened? So one day they were just like, hey, we're not going to need your services anymore? No, he's like, you need to come on to this company. And he's like, I'm with, and like, try, you know, but it was oh. just be yeah. So but, then your friend you left. Know, no, they fired him. Oh, well, they did fire yeah, him yeah, yeah. because he was like, no, I don't want to be yeah, like, disloyal to the company that yeah, originally like, hired me. Yeah, and there was no – and it was just – he's like, this is all – and then I think that company was fired and then Corey put together his own. It's all was just a money scheme through him. So it just shows you that, like where he – like how does Corey get – like what's his agenda? Like, da, 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 Well, he's like, like best friends with um, Ellen and Portia. 
where they're like, oh, Corey helped style us. Exactly. And, and like, oh, Corey knows the art scene and everything. And I'm like, the way I think that happens is that Ellen, I mean, the show's almost over, but I, I swear to God, in the last three years, every time I've turned on Ellen, she's had a Kardashian on. I mean, she, it's, I don't know, with minus COVID time, the Kardashians are on once to twice a week. Okay. So, and she knows that's what's helping her show. So, who knows how many friends Ellen has? So, I think they all really became friends. And then that's Chris's boyfriend. So, it's like when you're friends with someone, you, you want to be nice to their partner and include them and everything. So, I think that they legit like got involved and were friendly with him. And he's probably very nice to them, you know? But it was just so then Kanye, now that Kanye's out, on the outskirts of all this. Have you watched the Kanye documentary? I started to watch some of it. I'm sorry I wasn't into it. Well, I'm a a Swifty, so I got to just state that fact. So, but I do appreciate hustle, make yourself famous energy. So that's what I took out of it. So I started to watch a little, I couldn't get into it. A lot of people corrected me and said, no, Heather, it does. It is good. And I do appreciate it. Okay, fine. Um, But so what happened was there Hollywood Unlocked posted a video of in the uh, the article is Corey Gamble allegedly spotted in the club kissing another woman. The video was very dark, very hard to see, very very well could not be him. The thing is, if if, if he was not if, he him. Was, if he was next to Chris that night in the bed, then she knows it wasn't him. If he wasn't, then there's got to be a question. So. Also, the it fact that removed. it hasn't been... Oh, it did get removed. It got removed within minutes. Oh. TMZ never reports on it. People caught it. YouTubers caught it and stuff. And Kanye caught it. And Kanye then reposted it on his page. And then he also did another photo of him. And he wrote, God has a plan to remove the godless Corey needed to never be here anyway. And I think he's a nice person, not a great person, a nice person who used to be around Puff's family, then got around Justin Bieber. And then when Chris got divorced, he slid in. He became the TV version of the father figure. And as he always called himself a real N-word, he once told my wife he knew what kind of music she should be listening to. So when I seen him a week later, I had him removed from my daughter's birthday party. So you had him removed from your daughter's birthday party because he made a musical suggestion? I'm sure there was more to that. Right. We still never met his family. Whoops. We still never met his family, and I guess he never will. He got well, my he probably wife played linked. Drake. You know, that's probably when there was, like, the Drake beef. Maybe. Know. He got my wife linked with the liberals in a deep way. That was his job. For some reason, I always felt he worked for DuPont or some organization. I hope he does. Pedigree. I hope it's that interesting. And then we get, like... I hope. Now he's off to his next mission. His job is done. He's not messy enough to do something like this. Now he says he's not messy enough to do something like this. So now he's saying, I don't believe that was him in the video. But I want you guys to know this is out there. And I want you to know there's probably a reason why it got removed. And while no one's talking about it, because the power of the Kardashians. It's on purpose. I love Chris. This woman is a hero and she's done what she had to do to protect her family and make sure they prosper, even if it meant telling everyone not to listen to me. I respect her grind and her hustle. And in her mind, Chris is one of the best ever. So then he compliments her at the end. I mean, it's just crazy. So now um, then Apple pulls his deal. I haven't seen this angle. He's saying that it's I he made it out that they offered him 100 million, but he wouldn't meet with Tim Cook. Oh, Okay, it was a hundred million. Oh, so he. Uh, what I understood so, is he had a deal with Apple to stream his music. Apple, because of all his craziness, there was some happening, and then he goes, "No problem. I'm going to do my own streaming service. You can listen to my music along with other music. It costs two hundred dollars, and he made two point four million dollars in twenty four hours." What's so interesting is because Heidi does stream her shout out superficial pop album that we spent two point seven million on. So go go listen to that. Um, and it's just this exact thing we always say. Like if artists really what he's saying, like obviously he's saying it. Everyone's like, ah, uh, if you got so so Heidi gets maybe a check for a thousand dollars every month for this album. Which do you know how many people are listening to your album to make it come so? It's like how many zero, people have to listen to, to make get a thousand? thousand. Yeah. So if it was true to like, re, like she really would have an income off of this, and he yeah. was saying that two point two million dollars would have been five hundred million streams to like see that, and then he wouldn't even have seen that money because they take their. 
It is it is mind boggling that I feel like we have an investment out there that one day there is a way that we, as you know, Heidi's labor, right? We see that money back because it's. I'm always like a thousand. That's great, but then you look at like when it shows. Have you seen those memes where it's like how many streams for Spotify, how many Apple to get like a penny? So it's like Heidi's a pop star right now, right? Right. I mean, it's kind of interesting that he did that. So then he said, um, then he posted this one. I love this. Weird outfit. Kanye said, there are two kinds of people, people on my team or losers. I mean, I just wish he'd apologize to Taylor Swift so I could enjoy more of this. You know, I just want him to say it was all Kim who was behind that and just. It was not Kim I, behind Well, it. I just want him It was him, him being least. buzzed and thinking that, you no, know. No, he, he already apologized like, for that. Yes. They made peace then. Oh, the other the, stuff. Then they had re-beef. So I still right. can't ever enjoy anything Kanye. So then Kanye West takes aim at Peppa, Peppa Pig. I miss in this. In his latest social media post. Peppa Pig is just like a, a kid cartoon. Anyway, the pig came out with an album, and it's doing well. (laughs) So Kanye West has been blowing up the internet in recent weeks, but his latest feud has many scratching their heads. The rapper took aim at Peppa Pig after the animated character's soundtracks was reviewed higher than his latest album. Are you guys familiar with it? Uh, You know, I'm done with Peppa. I have heard enough Peppa. for Peppa and Blippi are just like, don't don't even... Play. I mean that British accent all day. I mean, no, thank you. Now we're on Bluey. Bluey's amazing. Oh, Bluey's your new fave. Well, Gunner's new fave. Oh, so, okay. You know. Well, since you wrote the book on fame, literally, you had a book yeah. about how to be famous. Julia Fox. Wow. Well, she so, and these leather pants have worked really hard these last couple weeks. I will say that it was she took my breath away when she. Name like I didn't see it coming. Like I, you know, I watch Billions and I've seen that storyline. Yeah. But when she was like, "I was a dominatrix," I was like, "Oh my, what a niche!" Like this girl, like I thought I've heard it all. Like what? A Do you think di- that's maybe why she's wearing the leather pants to remind that's people at sa- one time she was? Well, she says in you didn't watch Call Her Daddy interview with her. I mean, I watched some of it, but oh, I knew that they she talk. Was like- Oh, that yeah. she was literally like it's her uniform. She was has been wearing the leather pre Kanye pre Kim the pleather. That's it's all, actually yeah, pleather, pleather, whatever. Yeah. She's been wearing that as her job forever, and it's just her way of life. But when she said the dominatrix thing, I was like, good for her. That's a very original lane to take. Like she should come out with the book. She should like she. You know, that's I don't know any famous dominatrix in the in the fame game. I'm but, not. I'm not a fan. I mean. Uh, And she annoys me. Anyway, she was out. (laughs) I didn't say I was a fan. (laughs) Julia Fox steps out to hunt new man. This is the way they wrote it. From this is coming from the international, the news. Julia Fox steps out to hunt a new man. She just like looks like she's just in a suburban sidewalk, um, in cutout top and figure clinging pants. You need to do the audio on TikTok of the uncut jams. First of all, I did it on my show like. Oh, before it was trendy? Kind of. Uh, And then everybody keeps sending it to me, uh, and it's always guys doing it. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm done. I mean, one TikTok, you should just, and then be done. (laughs) Yeah. That is a muse. What is it? I was Saf, what's his name? Bob Saf, what's his name? I was John Safdie's muse and Uncut Jams. Yeah, she's annoying. I'm not... (laughs) Go away. Wait. So this was a. Do you think she knew it was over pre going on that podcast? Do you think that podcast ended it for her? Because I was like, right when I started going, I was like, oh, it's a wrap for you, girl. Why did you think that? Because like that. She revealed yeah, uh, it too, revealed much, too like, much. Yeah, like play your role is what I've always. Learned. I kind of. I think you're right. I think had she stayed a little more mysterious, um, you know, like when I think about back in the day of Madonna's rise. She so rarely did interviews and things. Of course, we didn't have a million podcasts you could be on. But there was such a mystery to, like, Madonna. And I think that kept people like, oh, she's got a new album, la, la, la. I think there was a weird mystery to this girl. Like, are they screwing? Are they not? Like, what is this going on? What is she trying to do? And then you're right. I think once she did it, I was just like, oh, you're just a thirst whore like everybody else. And then when she wrote that, other thing where she's like, we were not in, I'm not in love I with never him. never cried. Yeah, I didn't cry oh, over him. Yes. And, you know, we're good and we're fine. And I'm the hustler of all hustlers. I'm like, why do you want to admit that? 
No. I, Why do you want to admit that you sought again, out this fame? Again, Don't all admit I defended it. was the original dominatrix take. I, yeah. That's for every girl that's done her game. Yeah. No one's claimed that is is all I, is all she gets. Oh, so the alleged the points. alleged story too. This is a let oh, alleged story too behind her is um that apparently, you know, she got with him, Kanye. So that if she wanted to get into a world of paid girlfriend, being classy about it, that really ups her game. Oh. Because now she is the woman that was with Kanye. So just like I've I've said before, how does a wife of a former billionaire get another billionaire? Well, that billionaire wants what that billionaire once had. Like they want – you know, why people would pay... It's a stock. St- yeah, why people would pay... You know, you'd hear about these actresses that would get paid a lot to go be with a Saudi prince. You know, you didn't know if it was true. Maybe it was true. But, yeah, because it's like, ugh, I can afford to have this. Versus just a pretty girl that's in the game of being an escort. You know, she... They want, the, they she, want, they want to say, oh, I'm my the girl I'm paying to be my girlfriend was once with the biggest music star in the world. My first thought when it went down, though, when I saw that it was like over, I was like, is that she was calling all those girls from her birthday party and be like, give me that Birkin. Oh, you don't get right. that Birkin. Like, she's so mad that all those girls got gifted Birkins. They should have all gone to her <sighs> and her head. She's probably like, <sighs> why do you think he did that? Just because money's no object and he just wanted to look well, Kim cool. Kim loves all, I think it was like, I should fuck you to Kim. Yeah, like Kim and is all Birkined out. They're all, it's like, I'll buy five Birkins for this birthday party. I, I thought it was pretty entertaining. There's a, this little house, this little burger little, that looks like a little, little house. Baby. Those are the hardest ones. The, the one that look like a little house. And um, Crystal from Beverly Hills had it on the show, Real House was Beverly Hills. Anyway, it is now for sale, that little house version, for 210000 It's literally the cost of a little house. I, you know, I love rich people. I mean, hey, <laughs> and, and I'm like, sick. the only point is just for you to go around and show the world that you have something that they don't. Well, it's also an investment. Well, it was because yeah, Crystal yeah. came on my show and she's like, I do invest in those things. So I bought it for 90000 yeah. And so the person that let me know that it's now going for two ten, they're like, yeah, she's right. Yeah, the, Hermes only goes You're an up. idiot. Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of juicy. There's this girl that was on 90 Day Fiance that's now dating OJ Simpson. How scary. Like I know. You, like you almost are like a like you just what a br- you're, I guess like you're and you're going to brag about it? I guess she, she even, you she literally even, are like, well, he's not going to risk murdering me. Yeah, but it's like what if? What if you, you know, I mean, like, he has continued to date women that, that look, look like, like Nicole, the blonde hair, the tan, tan skin. And this girl was on 90 Day Fiance. She clearly is a, a thirst trap fame whore person that would risk her life to be with. I mean, someone that – and he was in prison for stealing like his own stuff and kidnapping people. I mean like I just – anyway, so that was crazy. My favorite is every now and then when OJ like comment on something like – like as the higher good, like he'll be like, "Oh, you shot him!" I'm like, "Bro, just like, <laughs> like you know, like, I don't, even, I don't know my reference." I'm sure the two of them like, are trying up. to get some reality show thing going. You know, they've always tried. This was sad, Lamar. So on this the is Big Brother. So I, now you were on Big Brother, not the American version. They've, they've been player hating, but I'm, I would like to be on the American. You'll be version. on the American if they ask. Yeah, and um. Yes, so he was saying, Mr. Chloe, and so are you watching this, Big Brother? No, but I I watched clips and I saw him, you know. I think now being sober-ish that he's looking back like – I mean, Chloe was a catch for him. Totally. And how she treated him. And like, I watched the show and Rob lived there and she had all the candy organized. And, you know, I mean. No, it was so sad because she was were, a good yeah. freaking wife. You so know? she would have wanted it all. But now when you now you realize that even though on TV she was saying, no, like I can't get pregnant with Lamar. Like then later on she revealed, no, I didn't get pregnant with Lamar because I – I knew of these demons that he had and I was putting up with him, but I didn't want to have a child with him necessarily. And I think she was still really sad that the marriage ended and that they couldn't make it work. But I think when we were watching it, 
we were thinking that they were just a super cutesy little couple. Yeah, and she knew he was cheating and doing drugs, and was like, "How do? What do I do now? What do I? What's how do I get out of this?" And then eventually, she got out of it. Or did she? Like, is it is Tristan better than Lamar? Like, maybe he's not on drugs, but like. I don't, you know. No, but same. I mean, she definitely does. I definitely think there's no chance in hell she wants to get back with Lamar. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not saying you go back, that, but I'm saying Also, there's she's nothing still... that Lamar could offer her. Like, it yeah. was so cute when they were together because. He was a Laker. He was Kobe. a Laker and they were coming up. Like, they weren't nearly as famous. And, like, it was so cute that they all went to the games and it was just all wonderful. But, like, now the world knows everything you've done and that you have IBS. Oh my god, that's the gnarliest thing I that know, he did that just, on the show, and then yeah. he's like joking about it. I would have just been like, "Nah, that didn't happen." <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, it didn't, didn't happen." Like, you messed no. up the bag. I would just do they like, have maids and stuff for that situation. I'm sure not in the one, not usually, but but like, did you have to clean up after yourself? Yeah, for the whole time, but not in this. I don't. Think. And how did you win? How far uh, we did, you did it get? twice? So the first time. It was rigged, and we got second place to then the guy that becomes the host of Big Brother Forever, Rylan, who okay. becomes their Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. So it was rigged. We won. Um, and then we went back for the All-Stars, yeah. which once you realize after like 30 days in there, however, like when you start going crazy, like you get paid the same amount if you don't win as if you got out in the first day, you start being like, let me get out of here. So, so the only way to make more money is if you actually win. No. Same check. The only way you'd win to make more money by winning is if you live in England, like you'll get some maybe a few more paid opportunities. But oh. like Heidi and I got second place and we got like a spinoff special. Got it. That the winner didn't get. So maybe we ended up getting paid more. He had a longer career now being the winner. Right. But so in the second time in the All-Stars – you know, and we're in England. If I'm in America, I'm trying to be on CBS for the entire okay. the winter is the most time you're on broadcast were TV. Were you able to get fresh air? Uh, yeah, there's an outside oh, courtyard. Okay. Right. It's the most insane. You, like, it's the most insane thing you can do on planet Earth in the fame world. Really? Oh, yeah. So if they ask me now being that I'm famous Well, for I'm my sure England's – England is on a whole nother no, level. No, not of, England. No, and I'm saying like – U.S. would be so much easier, I'm saying. Oh, you think? Oh, my God. Why would it be easier? British reality TV producers are, like, out of a horror movie. Really? Why? Like, we met the the guy that owned the network after, and he was literally, like, he's like, I told them, give me blood. I wanted to see her blood. Like, like out of a horror movie. <laughs> Shout out Richard Desmond. He then put us up at the Dorchester. But, like, he was like, I told them to murder you. Like, and he's dead serious. We're like, yeah, I know. It felt that way, you know. Um <laughs> They just don't have that level. You know, it's wow. CBS. It's hokey dokey fun. It's not – in England, they were trying to, like, have people. It's right. a different level. So I'd definitely do it if you get offered. Okay. Oh, my well, God. I don't know. So 818 Tequila. I hope you didn't say no already. That was uh, – no one's calling me. Ah, uh, just checking. 818 Tequila got sued because they believe that that's uh, Kylie's – I mean, Kendall's tequila because they ripped off uh, 512 Tequila. One of my know. biggest things with these celebrities and their products they influence, like, because I do drink tequila like, yeah. often. Do I look like, Kyle, do I have cheekbones like her? You can't drink tequila and have cheekbones. So it's like, I know you're not, you're kissing that That's as, as much as you're doing with that bottle. It's just frustrating because I actually do drink that tequila. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm team uh, Kendall on this right now. Because you think she drinks tequila? I, I'm saying, so what? Listen. People have been using the area code in songs, in talking about it, in a cred thing. So the fact that she called her tequila 818 and there happened to be another tequila called 512 from Austin, Texas. I don't know if that's – I mean I haven't read the oh, whole Oh, this is lawsuit, the dumbest lawsuit But ever. I'm like you could be allowed to do that. And 512 like, is not about? famous. 818 is famous. Exactly. As like, someone who was born and raised in the 818, like it's been only my prefix – Ever well, no, actually, when I had my apartment in Brentwood and, and in college, it was three one zero. But I've had my eight one eight for a long time. I think it was great, and I love that she like made the eight one eight cool. So Good for I hope her. I, I just hope don't she think wins. she's drinking that. Um, Sam Hunt, the singer. Ooh, I read this this morning. His pregnant wife filed for divorce, citing adultery. 
I mean, breaking news here. Like, I don't. Why do you have some scoops? No, I mean, oh. like the guy is like a good-looking country superstar. Like, I feel like it's hard for these guys not to be out and about. I think it's sadder when it's country. I think we expect it from other musicians. Oh, lately these country musicians have been uh, a little bit more. All the country more... songs are just so like cute. Like when, you know, just like listening to it, it's always just like, I saw you in the bar and I asked for your number and I'm like, oh God, I remember and being And I cheated bar. on you when you were pregnant. Yeah. That sounds like a country song <laughs> nowadays. Oh, that's painful. Because I kept drinking. Because we were listening to music on the way down to Newport this weekend and we were listening to you know, the unfiltered rap, you know, and I just couldn't after a while. I was like, this is just too many bad words. And like, and I'm just imagining these guys and all the bitches coming over and what they'd be wearing and uh, like the way they were talking about them and stuff. And I was like, can we just, and then we switched to country. And the song was about like, you walked into the bar. I saw you. I got the nerve to ask for your number. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. Like they went on a date. She wasn't competing, you know, twerking with 12 other girls in, like, a smoke-filled room. Uh, The other song I was listening to. But then I read this, and I was like... like, It's all the same. Yeah. He asked for someone's number while he had a pregnant girl at home. (sighs) That's the remix. That's sad. Um, Did you see this video? Being that you're a bird person... This this was spooky. I, I wanted to start believing in, like, 5G conspiracy. I was like, they got a 5G tower over there. This, you guys, is about the blackbirds that mysteriously plummeted from the sky in Mexico. Have you not seen this video? This is some crazy alien shit. It was, that's my other. I was like, did it hit a UFO? They don't know what it is. Environment. First, they thought, oh, maybe they got spooked by a predator, a bird, or something. I'm like, 500 <laughs> of them go plunging. Then they said, maybe it's environmental. Being that you are the bird whisperer of honey hummingbirds, not that they know these birds or that they talk to each other. But what is your thought of what happened? Um, I is the world ending. You know, this was a scary moment. It was this is how scary the planet is that I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Like when I saw it, I was like, this is the level we're at. Like, but there have been weird things where, like, all of a sudden, there's like a bunch of dead fish on a on a beach. Like, there's been weird stuff like this that's been happening. I think if we really watched like a documentary of all the weird stuff that everybody had, we'd be like, oh, it's end of times, and you know, <laughs> they'd have your video of you just going down. I think that's what people are saying. They're uh, like, uh, this is you know, a this is, the, this is, yeah, this is Could God. Can you make talking. that into a TikTok? Yeah, we, we uh, put it on. But the it. ones that of people that are like conservative or Christian, theirs got a lot more views than me because they already had more people on their TikTok. So there was one guy that had like two million subscribers, and he did it, and it was like at a million. Like, did you stitch it? Ago. You got to start stitching these. That was on reels. Oh, it was uh, on reels. I don't know. Yeah, that's the whole thing on my TikTok meeting is stitching is very... Okay, well, you'll give us a little yeah. lesson before we leave. Also, former housewife uh, Kim Richards, her daughter Brooke, married into the Fatburger family, and their their whole house was raided, Brooke and her husband, for fraud and money laundering. It's a good thing about like not having any money. I don't have to like worry about like <laughs> that, at least. Like, you no. Know. No bankers are coming for us. Like, there's no money. I feel like half the, like half the stuff at the DA's office is involving like former housewives and former, like just keeping them in business. Just geez, like that, that gas going. Everyone's trying to cancel. He's like, I'm getting all the housewives. I'm like, just like, I, listen. If there's not some type of intern program at every DA's office in the city where we're like, just watch all these reality shows and just bring in a report and just let us know who you think we should check out. Um, well, you saw that on Valentine's Day with the, with the FBI did, right? No. They put out a tweet and they were like, any uh, women that are still upset about ex-boyfriends or exes they're involved with that you know are involved in criminal activity, reach out to us. We can make their Valentine's Day extra special or whatever. And I was like, whew, now that's an idea. Did they really? Yeah. yeah. That's a great They're idea. They're like, we just, we just closed a bunch of files <laughs> looking for new ones. Yeah. Come on. Come on down. Um, are you watching the um, Olympics at all? I'm not, but I got involved in the, the controversy with the— Little Russian? No, with, with the San Francisco Stanford model— uh, what's that story? Tell me. What's her name? Gyu? Gyu? 
What did she the do? The girl that chose to go for China. Oh, chose to represent China, China and not America? Of the US, even though she's like like an Instagram model in San Francisco and going to Stanford. Okay. And then right away I told Heidi, I was like, uh, yeah, in China they probably wrote her the fattest checks ever. And then wherever I could be wrong, but I read that she got $23 million in Chinese endorsement deals. And you're not getting $23 million for any American endorsement deals right Ooh, now as a skier. Juicy. But then she's like trying to spin it. Like I brought like 300 million more eyes on the skiing. It's like, so, like, what? And like, she was able to because she was born in China, but no, then I think, became. I think she's just from Chinese descent. I don't. I don't want to. I'm gonna have 400 DMs. So I don't know. I, yeah, we don't know. Something where don't have she all definitely should. You know, it's more expected that she'd be for U.S. So got it. Got that's it. The only like. Well, this you know, Finnish cross country skier, which by the way, I think cross country skiing is like, like the saddest sport ever. Is suffers, this where they get to shoot the gun at the end? That. No, no, that's a different thing. Uh, this is just, you know, you're just, basically just like walking in skis. Anyway, he suffered a frozen penis during the Winter Olympics in the 50-kilometer race, then refuses a heat-packed thought after suffering unbearable pain. Why is he wearing a Speedo, though? To, to get out. moving faster. So he suffered a frozen pe- penis, and um, this is the second time he has suffered a freezing penis after a race last year. And he's 24-year-old, was the 28th in the race. And um, so there you go. It was very I love cold. the Daily Mail so much. What also, did we do before the Daily Mail? Also, this guy, um, you know, Sean White. I, so sad he fell. Yeah, but I mean, he's won a lot. I know, but you want to go out like Well, this I mean, point, you kept going, though. It's like his fifth Olympics. He, I just thought, I mean, he was point two. Like, it was such, if he hadn't fallen, he would have at least got a bronze medal. Anyway, he's with this girl. They're like Nina. Having, they're having some fun from the girl from uh, the Netflix rom com Love Hard. Well, he's she's not cute. famous he's for so that. Nice. She's famous from the Vampire Show. Oh, well, whatever. He's a nice guy. Now, not a nice well, guy. This... He wasn't. There was some stuff uh, like a few years ago. We don't have to bring up. Uh, oh, to bring it up. Wasn't he? He had a whole controversy about. He, he has a good crisis PR team. Let's just say that. What was the controversy? I would have to Google it. I don't know. Well, I, look it up, people. It was definitely like a thing. Like mm. some ex girlfriend. Wasn't know. happy? I don't know. Wait, I don't know. I really don't know. I remember we had a line of clothes that was pretty cute at Target that I'd buy for the boys. He definitely had something where I was like, woo. And he doesn't have the long hair anymore. Now it's like a cute little quaff. Yeah. Short hair, too. Um, this is pretty juicy. So Epstein's <sighs> pal, Jean Luc Brunel who was completely part of the Epstein sex trafficking, got the models, the French models. He was like an Epstein's thing. pimp. Yes, much. he'd bring the girls. Anyway, he made numerous uh, suicide attempts, according to his lawyer, but apparently committed suicide in prison, hung himself, was found at 1.30 a.m. I wonder if it was at the same time Bernie Madoff's sister and husband also decided to murder suicide themselves. That just happened too. Yeah. And I guess her son had worked for Bernie, but I don't know what, if there was any tie or were they just a couple that was getting on in years and like losing it and didn't want to. No, I think my conspiratorial mind yes. is that they were like, oh, you Something's stole all this money. We're going to kill Slowly but surely, everyone in your family, and they weren't going to let these older people just die happily. Oh, so you don't think they killed themselves? No way. Murder, suicide, this is the 101. That's like how they stage these freaking hits. Mm. Okay, well, I think they'll probably. There's multiple people, I think, connected well, to with, Bernie with that have you, now but killed with themselves. Gun, with gun violence, that is kind of hard to fake. If it's not, these guys are. That's what they do. That's what their job is. To they're like former homicide detectives that know exactly how. Who to then do it. become assassins? Of course. Oh, jeez. Okay. You know, Glad that's, you that's, know. That's like the shtick. And okay, so there you go. Well, I mean, here allegedly. they were all hanging out. This guy, the guy that is that Seacrest? He looks like Seacrest. No, he does look like Seacrest right there. No, this is Ghislaine. No. This is Epstein. And this is this Jean Luc guy, uh, all on their private uh, planes, having the secrets. time of life. And um, okay, we're gonna finish up. I made you watch Love Is Blind. I couldn't get past uh, 
the first episode. No, no, I got through like five. I got through like five. It's so hard for me to believe. I think these people are like, I'm gonna, I could, like, I think you can't leave the show. Right. Until you marry up. And I think you get the same check. And I think people get so burnt out in that house that they're like, okay, this is good enough. I, yeah, because once they pair up, then they go to the Mexico trip for a week. Oh, I haven't and got that, to that. Oh, I wonder why. So oh, okay. what I what I what uh, I didn't realize uh, is that they they all live in Chicago. So everybody then comes back from Mexico that's still together, and they get them these apartments with setup cameras and stuff, and then they cohabitate in a a clean new apartment. Not the guys, not the girls, and then they're supposed to get married in three weeks. So if they can handle living together. In oh, this, apartment. I, this show's going to get a lot better. Thank you for You just got to invest. That's what I'm saying. I got like. Because I was like, this is awkward. I felt like if their cameras weren't happening, this like almost felt like, in like, the pod. Uh, like a, so they talk a weird the, porno so, thing. They're like, what are you wearing? And then, yes. uh, how many times do you have sex a day? I'm like, this is, what am I? It's like a sex chat show. Like a, yeah. Like a hotline or something. So what happens is they talk in these pods. So they talk behind a wall. They can never see them. They have no idea what ethnicity they are what size they are if one person's taller or shorter than them then they then if the guy decides i want to marry you he asks them then she says yes then they meet for the first time what was interesting is one couple the indian had vet, never dated non-indian couples or they he always dated blondes and, and then same he with gets, her too she yes said. and so then they were like this is great we're both indian and we're like into each other but she's way more into him than he is into her Oh, once they leave? Yeah, once they're uh, in, he's like, I don't alert. know if I'm feeling it. Um, and then other couples are are getting it on, but they're like starting to have cracks. And now, you know, and let's see who gets married. And so um, the first season, I asked Annie to look up, like there was this favorite couple, really cute couple. And I checked. He has a million followers on Instagram, and they're still totally together. Wow, that'll keep a franchise going. I was but who so. Who cares? Who's t- who even cares about them anymore? I would. I'm shocked. If I watched, but that, I guess if that you, show in slow motion, I guess for, if you follow them, I felt like I was then watching that show for two years. Last I feel like night. once you get the followers, it's very rare that someone stops following you. So uh, it it's depends like, what algorithm you're. you're yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you probably got the million, and they still are showing themselves being cute, and people just feel like, Good oh, I don't. Need, they don't annoy me, so why would I stop following them? Good for them. Yeah. So because my thought was like, I want to see one of these last, and there it is. From the last season, yeah, I think only one is lasting from the last season, right? Or two? Two. Two made it from the last season. So I was so jealous of, you know, in a positive, non negative, jealous, inspired by Nick Lachey and Vanessa being the host. I was like, look, Heidi, we're, we've been together 16 years. We could do a, a love romance dating show host one day. Well, putting listen, that out there. No, maybe they'll, maybe, I don't think they add much to it. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to take their. their I'm sure there's another it dating. Like, it there's another like dating trying, show coming on Netflix. It sounds like you're trying to take their job, but I'm down for you guys trying to take the oh, job no. because I think it would be fun to see them get a little more involved. I would like to see someone with a little more personality that comes in and is a little more Chris Harrison and like going, how are you guys feeling? Like we're not seeing anything. I feel like if we had a couple that was a little more like into it, they'd be like, all right, hold on a minute. It's a new show on Netflix. We just saw your fight with. at the beach. Like, what are you feeling? Like, there's none of that. You're going to see there's none of it. It's just them coming out and being like, so guys, I hope you enjoy your week here. And then we never see them again. Well, somebody should have gone to the blonde buff dude and been like, the real you just got bullied out of, like, he, that lady bullied him into like, locking, like, that's not really the name of the sh- game of that show yet. He didn't need to commit that fast to, you know, I think... Well, you're going to see their relationship starts to have some cracks because mm-hmm. he's actually way – she he's more into her. And she thinks he's a babe, but she's kind of a bitch. And he's like – Oh, so she – okay. So I so thought he was more he's into the like, uh, Shana, Shana. The oh, yeah. Had. He is. So now they all go back living in Chicago. So you wonder – she still wants to get with him. She, like the one – so you kind of wonder they could run into each other. They they might have more cocktail parties and stuff where they see someone that they previously flirted with, and go, "Did I choose the wrong person?" I'm gonna because it's truly out. like it's love is blind, but it's also like you were on an island. These were the ten people to choose from, and you, it was down to these two. And did you pick the wrong one? 
Yeah, I was just blown to away. To hook up for the rest of your life. We're even playing like, let's get engaged. You know, it's kind of also just really after talking to somebody through a wall, you can marry them. But I guess that's you guys have such a connection. Good for them. I think people really want to be on TV and they want free housing. And, and a free, free food. vacation. When and I heard they food. had the breakfast burritos, I was like, show the burrito. What does this burrito look yeah, like? Yeah, and they have cute, like, housing. Oh, yeah. Air conditioning. Yeah, I mean, the jobs that they have are not great. I mean, so no one's giving up anything, just like the people on Bachelor. You know, it's like, oh, I'm a healthcare consultant. Okay. Like, you can take a break from that. You know, all these people have, like, Kind of average careers. So they're like, why not do this? And let, hopefully it'll lead to love and possibly a more fun career than me consulting on health care or whatever. One of the best vacations Heidi and I have ever gone on was the marriage boot camp house on WeTV. Where was Mansion, it? Mansion right on Beverly Hills. Chef, three meals a day, unlimited open bar with all top shelf liquor. And when Just, did you, how many years ago did you guys do that? Uh, 2000. 13 for I don't know but it was I like I, was, I think back to like did you what have a to great, create problems no we realized we did have problems oh, like we did. I didn't understand Heidi's love languages and you know I don't I wasn't trying to woo Heidi enough you know yeah just things that are you know she still brings up like things from marriage boot camp to this day and I'm like wow this oh great. so you actually got some tools from yeah her. yeah that, so, so it, and you think it's a good thing to do for couples I mean, if did you in, fight with the other couples? Yeah, oh yeah, I guess I. Who yeah. did you love and who did you hate? I guess we didn't like. Um, I'm so sorry to reference her, but who is missing the arm or the leg? Hamilton? No, not the, the one surfer. that's married to um, the E News guy. No, the one that was uh, oh, Be- no. by a shark. No, the one that was lost on it on New a York helicopter. Wa- Housewives. Oh, Aviva Drescher. Yeah, she we, didn't have we, a leg. We yeah. beefed with her. Oh, you did? Why? She was beefable. I forget. Oh. I don't know. We're having fun. I don't know. She's always complaining yeah. about. Does that show still happen? I feel like it's been a minute since they've done it. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Because we should be like on like a check, like a follow. We couldn't go. That's the problem now having Gunner. It's like all these shows. Yeah. Like I just I had to say no to Big Brother All Stars because they're in uh, Australia. Because it's like they had the quarantine that added another two and a half weeks right, plus that. And I was like, extra. So like I'm not like leaving what, like, five, yeah, like however. I was like, I'm not leaving Gunner when every night he's like, Dad needs to read me two books. Like, and he cares. Like, yeah. I say how, like so much. I'm how like, much? Yeah. Uh, how much did you, did you give up to half read those books million. to Gunner? Well, you can always bring that up to him. Oh, I will. Throw it up in his face for the rest of his I life. Will. I will. Well, now that they just lifted the restrictions, I'm hoping they like, call me Dad, back. Dad, get out of my room at a like, certain point. They're going to be like, these books you cost a half a million. <laughs> but they just, I just read yesterday, no more quarantine to thing. To do these costs. shows, thank God. So I'm hoping they do a season right. two. And I told them, I was like, second you don't, because it was one thing, if you're going to film us being locked up yeah. by ourselves in this, they're like, we'll have a window for you. I'm like, a window? window? This was a real pitch. And like it's the government facility, They'll, we can get you a window, and they don't pay you for those extra two and a half weeks. I'm like, you're gonna lock me up and not pay me and not film me? Like you're missing this. But oh my like, god, so I'm on deck for a no bunch life. of things. Good, I got you in here before you. Oh no, I'm up always again. gonna keep coming back. I see Justin, how famous you've gotten him. He's just <laughs> all over the United States. I'm trying to do one of these tours like him. <laughs> Spencer, everyone follow you. Instagram, TikTok, Heidi, follow Heidi. Really, I need no followers. I need oh. you, all the Juicy Scoopers. Just the Juicy Scoopers To go support. to PrattDaddy.com and buy crystals. And buy a crystal. Or crystal bracelets. That, that's now my full-time business, thanks to having a garbage cast that couldn't continue to get <laughs> us television checks that made my life so much better. Now... I got to really hustle. Yeah, you got to hustle it. Um, <sighs> your shirt, wait, is the back of the shirt the one that has the... All of my shirts now have them. Has the square... It's called the flow code. Okay. I should be getting paid by flow code. Okay. And then they can, people, if they see you, can just do it. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then it just, boom, pops them up to all... Like for you, right? everything, all your merch should have flow code because it would open up YouTube, like... 
Like you open it up, it opens up everything that you would want. Your merch, your the Spotify. What's, and what's your weird judge show? Oh, thank you. It's uh it is a weird judge show. It's called Judge Me okay. on Looped. And each what is week Looped? Looped is a virtual this would be amazing for you. Okay. Actually to do like sometimes if you don't want to do uh, a live event okay. and you have to go somewhere it's a live virtual audience that people can buy tickets for and you can bring people up onto the stage so it's like a a really nice zoom okay that's all set but it's designed for a theater and you could change the theater set. blah blah okay. so um so each week i have two stories of people on the internet or in their friend groups or whatever that feel like they were, it's Judge Judy for me. My mom loves, oh, besides you, okay. Judge Judy's her favorite. Yes. So when they had the idea, I was like, this is literally, my mom manifested this for me. Okay. And so then I, you know, we bring people on and then we use the audience and myself and we decide if they deserved what they're getting or maybe if they were wrong. So on the pilot first episode, one of our Pratt Daddy employees came on because she was the girl involved with the Matthew Perry uh TikTok where she like exposed his Raya when yes. when he was having the like when he was engaged or whatever. So in and you know, has a book coming out. We talked about that. Hopefully she, yeah. he references her. Um and so she brought her friend Tate on and Tate was like, if she wanted to really expose this guy and do something negative, like what was really on the video that she has makes him look so bad but she just did the like cutesy fun like do you always Ooh. twirl your hair made it like a fun like the ben affleck one yeah. and thought so in her defense it looked like she was trying to like expose this guy but it's like in a positive silly fun way and she didn't know he was engaged so she kind of got so much negativity so it was a good useful platform for her to like i didn't know that i was like wait let's watch that video let's put that on loop on my episode cool yeah, we didn't so there it is, every Thursday, live okay. on Loop. But go to Pratt Daddy and Just buy crystals. Just go to Pratt Daddy yeah, and get your crystal. Yeah.